Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a special guest on tonight. This is Diamond with Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch Project. The ever elusive Greg J. Uh, many of you have heard of him. In fact, he has almost 9,000 subscribers. Now, the reason I'm doing the interview with Greg J. tonight is to get you familiar with his excellent work on electric universe theory, Saturn cosmology, and more importantly, uh, bad science in general. Um, but that I think that he is a voice that we need in our community. Um, and he is lock, lacking a lot of information on the magnetic reversal and some of the climate stuff. So we're going to be sharing information here on this interview tonight. Now, Greg J has a, I know he has a YouTube. You guys are looking at it right now. And you can come over and subscribe to his channel and look at uh, all of his videos here. And notice if you're new to YouTube, up top here, there are places to click to look at his videos, his playlists, and his community. Not all of these videos are Greg's. In fact, the uploads are mostly his, but he also has linked a lot of important information on the background of his uh, cosmology theories and what he discusses in his research, including links to the Thunderbolts project and other sources that are very important to actually reworking the mythology of ancient man and our hidden history. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Greg J to the show. Greg, is there anything you can tell us that I, I didn't make up already? <laughs> oh no, I thought you did an excellent job. Excellent. And I'm most interested now when I found you, I don't know, it was a, quite a while ago. I knew that you were studying Electric Universe and the Thunderbolts project. I was most intrigued by your mm -hmm. voice, your inflection, and the style of production that you bring to YouTube. Um, is there somehow, is there some background to that? Well, I, uh, well, I've kind of, I've been in bands, you know, I, uh, writing songs and stuff like that for, oh geez, since high school. So I've been a lead singer and guitar player for a lot of years. Maybe that might have something to do with uh, my style. Yeah. So you have a front man, uh, a front man style where you are very engaging and you can lead um, a very impressive um, review of Electric Universe cosmology. Now, when did you get into well, this you. type of uh, esoteric science? Um, well, I've kind of thought outside of the box all my life, but I didn't get into the Electric Universe particularly until 2015. I uh, found the video by Wal Thornhill, and I've always been intrigued by electricity all my life. And a simple search of electricity in space, you know, brought me to Wal Thornhill. After I had watched I don't know how many cosmology videos, and never even knew of their existence. But when I ran the search, electricity in space, I got it. I got the, the Thunderbolts group, and it was the beginning of a new love. I mean, I got Wall, like, immediately. Because it's the things that I've been thinking here and there when I see these guys so sure of themselves, talking about five billion years from now, this is going to happen. I mean, how, you, how do you even know that, it, you know, they talk about it like it's a couple of months away. That's, that, that's just one aspect. I mean, every aspect of science is just upside down. It doesn't make any sense. So he clicked, it clicked with me right off the bat. I mean, just within the first two minutes, I was digging it, you know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when I was introduced in, uh, to the Electric Universe theories, um, I was amazed at what mm -hmm. they were basically saying. And we're going to real quick, uh, you're still getting this, sh this screen shared. Is that correct? You can see uh, the Emmanuel Velikovsky I have up here, Greg? I do indeed. Okay, so yes. this all goes back <clears throat> to Worlds in Collision, uh, which is basically the yeah. first introduction to the mainstream of the idea that our recent past is much different than everyone believes. And when I was mm -hmm. introduced yeah. to Velikovsky and EU uh, theory, it blew my mind. Can you el elaborate on your, your oh, me uh, too. journey? 
Um, well, exactly. I mean, I like I said. Um, sorry, I'm turning my phone off. It's, I don't want it to bother us. Um, I was uh, doing, you know, my usual thing, uh, trolling YouTube, looking for some new documentaries because that's what I'm into. And uh, I saw, you know, I did the search and saw the Thunderbolts group. And I think for the next week or two weeks, I watched every single video I could by the Thunderbolts group. And I started my playlist that you see on my channel. And it's got, I don't know how many videos, probably almost all of them. And it would just even let it run, you know. You'd learn little things here. There's so much content to it that you really should watch a video many more than one time because you'll miss so much. There's, it's just so enormous, the amount of information, you know. Yeah, I agree. Did that answer your question? Yeah, 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 it does. And and the more we study this, yeah. the more is revealed. Now, Velikovsky portends, and even Einstein agreed with him, Greg, that the planetary positions currently were much different very recently. And what I mean by that, geologically speaking, very recently is within the last few thousand years, maybe 10 or tens of thousands the planets in our solar system were in much different orientations. And you are in agreement with what Velikovsky portends. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And he just brings common sense. And, you know, if you ever noticed one thing about uh, science in general, whether it's archaeology, geology, astronomy, there are no people who pay attention to other people's work. It's almost like they live on an island. There's no dot connectors. And I think Velikovsky was a major dot connector. And he did it through uh, just research. I mean, the guy would go to the library. He didn't even have the Internet. Can you imagine? He'd spend 16 hours a day or 12 hours a day at the library. And that's just amazing. I mean, his dedication is it's, uh, unbeatable. You know, yeah. I, I could never do that. Well, and, and in <laughs> yeah. order to do this work, you have to wade through what we call mythology to actually find what mm -hmm. the human race was witnessing. And we're looking here at the Babylonian star of Ishtar, which is the planet Venus and is probably yeah. the cornerstone of the actual Thunderbolts work. And this would be the polar alignment. Can you extrapolate on this in general terms? Uh, well, it's it's very intriguing. Uh, the work of David Talbot. He's got a couple of videos that are really good. Um, I, I'd say they're more like docu documentary movies. Uh, remembering the end of the world, and that's my favorite. And uh, symbols of an alien sky, which is probably better than remembering. But remembering it was made in the '90s before the internet. You know, I'm a little partial to analog. So, you know, I like that one. But uh, that that information that is in those two videos is just mind-blowing. And uh, basically, the polar alignment is one of the last, as I understand it, is one of the last phases that uh, the whole Saturn theory as a whole um, entails, you know. I mean, we, we had this this period where Saturn was a comet, and at that time the Earth was enveloped in its uh, plasma sheath, and I don't think that the beings or people that were alive at that time could see anything outside of that sheath. It was this misty kind of dusk purplish haze, and uh, once the plasma sheath was blown away or it uh, nova Saturn the, the star nova uh, that is apparently when the time when according to Velikovsky is the time that uh, uh, Osiris was uh, created the myth uh, the mythology of Osiris and the Egyptians and the uh, Greeks had their um, wars you know the uh, Homer epics the Iliad and the Odyssey. That's the way I understand it. And 
the explanation of that is uh, the actions that were going on in the sky. They were actually the planets themselves that were doing this. Indeed. Have you been enjoying and, uh, my well, picture essay yeah. here that I'm showing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. I, oh, yeah, they're very familiar. I see them all the time. There was a point in time. Now, that's the one thing that kind of gets me is the dates, because I, I remember the periods. I, it's really open to interpretation. It depends on who you talk to. <clears throat> now, the first thing I think that the oldest thing that they've been able, I'm sorry, I have to clear my throat. <clears throat> I hate that. I should hit the mute button. Um, the only, the earliest carvings for uh, phases of the moon, I think, were found in '64 or '65 by an archaeologist that showed phases of the moon carved in bone, and that, that carbon dated to 32,000 BC. So I, I would think that it was on at that time and then the polar configuration who knows how long that lasted but then there was a period where venus became unstable and it had mars in its grip and mars was dropping down to the earth and it uh, actually was known by the greeks as the killer of men so you know and the indians knew it they called it scarface so and it was known that it had two moons. Without a telescope, it would be very hard to know that. So there's a lot of things that are really hard to explain that the ancients knew, you know, without them having uh, modern stuff that we have today. Yeah, now I'm going to bring you over here to the magnetic reversal and glaciation chart. And I want you to see something very okay. obvious here. That starting at 47,000 okay. years ago, the magnetic re reversal excursion periodicity changed to very regular. And the Landsham, as well as the Gothenburg, are pretty significant paleoclimatological shifts. Now, what I mean by that is that okay. there was massive temperature shifts up to 20 degrees. And the most recent mm -hmm. 12,000 years ago that many people refer to as the Younger Dryas, uh, actually eliminated 65% of megafauna in North America and South America. So it is my uh, belief uh, okay. that with, with your information that possibly 47,000 years ago was the beginning, the end of that mm -hmm. uh, plasma sheath or the beginning of it being ripped off and our first view of the yes. actual so, uh, stars and planets. In which case... Man, is history wrong or what, Greg? Oh, my goodness, yes. You know, the uh, the elders or whatever they're called over there in Egypt, uh, I've, I've heard that they say that their civilization is not 6,000 years old. It's 60,000 years old. And that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think absolutely. it would make a lot not more sense than the <laughs> little... 4,000 years they got, you know, it's ridiculous. And if the Babylonian king's list, which it goes back 420,000 years, is actually only going back, let's say, 47,000 years or 42,000 years. Yeah. Yeah. It, the human species Well, that's pretty now, close, you know. Yeah, the human species, we've, we've pushed back Homo sapiens almost to 3.2 million, which means we could have advanced... Mm -hmm. Uh, civilizations for millions of years continuously getting destroyed by events mm. and the most recent event at that 47 kill year mark Greg is the, the end of the Neanderthal and other types of hominids <clears throat> and I just read a paper that came out uh, recently uh, this year that c correlates the 47 kill year Neanderthal extinction with a, a, a sudden burst in ultraviolet radiation is that amazing or what? Oh, uh, yes, that is, you know. That is amazing. Wow, I didn't the, know that. The paper came out within 72 hours, and I will send you a link to that, and we'll discuss it in our next podcast, because I believe oh, yeah. that this is absolutely oh, yeah. the breakthrough that we need uh, to convince people that we the sun that we see now is only 47,000 years old. Yeah. 
Well, you know, if as far as we know that we know the sun, then yes, I would I would tend to agree. <laughs> because uh, if we That's take all of the electric universe theories, Saturn, we might have been in the polar configuration in this solar system for some period of time before we saw the sun. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I do. And there's really no way to tell that until we start at the beginning, which we are, which is where we are right now. Yeah, it's wide open. You know, I mean, everything's on the table because there is no definitive way to know. The only thing you can really do is what you're doing is put the clues together and try to use an interdisciplinary approach. That is another reason why I think it is important that the electric universe paradigm be at least taken in and listened to because it makes complete sense. And their approach is interdisciplinary. The archaeology or the geology, if you will, should line up with the cosmology and all of it, you know. It should all line up, and that would make common sense to me. But uh, mainstream does not do that. Well, here we have a mainstream Except article. for three things. Here we, we're looking at a mainstream article, Greg. Um, the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late mm -hmm. quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals. And this is the one that mm -hmm. correlates the UVR flux and evolutionary events specifically in recent times. And the demise of Neanderthals at 41 kiloyears can now be closely tied to the intensity minimum associated with the Landchamp excursion, which through DNA analysis proves that this species died off because of UV exposure. That is amazing. It is. Yeah, that's another <laughs> another dot. You know, there's so many. Yeah. It's just, it's mind-blowing, like you said. It just blows your mind. Yeah, and, and there's no one that's getting funding in university to put these dots together, which is why people like you and I the, and the Thunderbolts Project are mm -hmm. very important because science only moves forward when we have yes. hypotheses and theories and we test them and then we change them and we continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that 100%. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm working on a video right now um, from Wall Thornhill's website, uh, on the electric universe and he basically said the same thing you know i agree with you 100 percent. science is dead but it's not dead over at greg j on youtube come over and subscribe now i was over at patreon looking for your patreon and i couldn't find a greg j on patreon mm -hmm. really it's a greg j channel oh, okay channel. Uh, let me let me see. yeah <laughs> yeah it's the greg j channel on patreon uh let me look for, i'm gonna Get on the internet here for a second. and So there'll be, uh, guys, if Patreon, you're watching this podcast, I, there'll be links to load to his Patreon. Support Greg's work. Come check out his uploads. He uploads pretty often, at least once or once a week, sometimes more. And he's talking about all the stuff we yes. talk about at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, about eternal life and consciousness. And he's using mythology to unravel the cosmology of our hidden history which is right before our very eyes being hidden from us in plain sight. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Greg. Yes. Uh, do you have any parting words for our listeners? And do you have any ideas what we may talk about on our next discussion other than Electric Universe? <laughs> um, I'm open to it all. I, I love anything Velikovsky, anything Electric Universe. Well, I just love science and history as a whole. I think that We've been given a snow job, and uh, if you're new to the Electric Universe and you haven't looked into it, by all means, please do. And if you'd like to watch one of my videos or a Thunderbolts video, just have an open mind and look at the common sense of it, and you will see it. Yeah, the p polar and configuration yeah. is undeniable that humans witnessed this in the past. The archetype... Uh, discussed by Jung and then Velikovsky and then the work done by Dave Talbot and then the correlation with yes. Anthony Peratt and the plasma instabilities. My goodness, Squatter Man mm -hmm. was in the sky. Yeah. It was in the night sky and witnessed and we've just put these pieces together. 
I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure, Greg. Guys, if you're out there, subscribe to his channel. Thank you very much. We're working together on this. You want to say goodbye? Yes. <laughs> um, well, take care, and I'll uh, see you on down the road. Be safe, everyone.